Tonight at the movies, ghoul master George dishes up the Gru in Land of the Dead. Good evening. Hi. We'll be speaking to zombie film legend George A. Romero and his cast in a few minutes. Horror geeks, stay tuned. And later in the show, we'll sample the cinematic delicacies of this year's Melbourne Film Festival. But first, let's go to the Land of the Dead. Well, following a fine tradition of politically subversive horror films, beginning with Night of the Living Dead, George Romero, hero of the gross-out counterculture, has returned with Land of the Dead. Not a lot has changed. In a landscape where corpses are rising from the dead and the living are making raids on living dead territory to get the means to survive, Riley, Simon Baker, leads a regular sortie to get necessities for an enclave of humanity in Uniontown and gets an inkling that the living dead are starting to think for themselves. Some germ or some devil got those things up and walking, but there's a big difference between us and them. They're dead. It's like they're pretending to be alive. Isn't that what we're doing? Pretending to be alive. He knows we're here. It's like he's talking to them. Let's go. Mr. K. Dennis Hopper has an ultra comfort zone called Fiddler's Field, which looks remarkably like a monument to capitalism. One of the mercenaries he employs, Cholo John Leguizamo, has thwarted aspirations to the good life. But Riley has only honour on his mind and survival for all, especially when he meets Slack, Azir Argento, who's been used and abused by the system. checking me out. The pleasure in this film is in knowing what to expect. There's no pretty, pretty optimism here, but there are pointed reminders of the times we live in. As Riley says to his sidekick, Charlie, Robert Joy, there's no such thing as good shooting. There's only nice shooting. How you draw the line there, I really will ponder on. But it's pretty much blood and gore and tension all the way. Romero in this film makes the zombies the most human he's ever depicted. Big Daddy Eugene Clark is almost a tragic figure. It's like the wild bunch one are in charge of society and the non-dead are the victimised. As one of the humans says, I thought it was going to be a battle. Instead, it's a massacre. Simon Baker makes an effective human hero and Asia Argento an interesting ally. It's tremendously ghoulish, this film, with dismembering and disinterring graphically depicted. But for its genre, it delivers. David. Well, I suppose it does, but, you know, since Shaun of the Dead last year, that Edgar Wright film, which was so funny, I thought, as a spoof of zombies in London, uh, I find it a bit hard to take a zombie movie like this Seriously. Oh, don't tell me that Shaun of the Dead has ruined your enjoyment. Well, no, I don't say ruined it, but it's but that was so clever, and and, and this sort of this plays it very straight. And uh, I mean, I've always liked uh, George Romero's uh, take on on the zombie films because there's always a, another agenda. There's always a political agenda, really, and there is here too, as you as you mentioned. I mean, it's interesting to remember that Night of the Living Dead back in 1968 uh, got into trouble with the Australian censors, and, and we couldn't see it properly for a long time. Um, but uh, now he's, of course. Uh, 65 years old, I guess, and still making zombie yes. movies. And he still has something to say about, yep. about the capitalist nightmare <laughs> or dream or whatever you like to call it. So it's interesting, but not quite as effective as I wanted it to be. Uh, I'm giving this three and a half stars. I'm giving it three. Walkers, Mr. Dimbo. And moving toward the city. They'll never get across the river. I wouldn't be so sure. Learning how to work together. They're mindless walking corpses, and many of us will be too if you don't stay focused on the task at hand. Zombies, man. They creep me out. How do you, as a director yourself, come as a performer to other people's films easily? Uh, once I directed, I, be I came easier. Before I directed, I, uh, I wasn't really interested. I was interested in only doing what I wanted to do because I thought they were all idiots. And then after I directed Easy Rider, 
and uh, I started performing other people's films. Uh, I might have still thought they were idiots, but I realized it was their film, <laughs> and uh, I would do the best I could do under the circumstances. Uh, this film with George Romero is totally different because he knows what he wants, and uh, he's a really, a really fine director. I, I, uh, I had a, it was a joy working for him. If you are using these films to make social commentary, how do you think the times have changed? Well, first of all, I think that people haven't changed all that much. I mean, it's if I was talking to Dennis about, you know, how disappointed we were with that the 60s didn't change the world. Um, and I, I think really that's one of the things that these films are saying, that people are still willing to be herded. Uh, you know, and it seems no matter how much information and no matter how much education and all that, they still are, you know, they're still, you know, are willing to, you know, stand behind uh, George Bush, you know. I mean, that he's like a video preacher of some kind, you know. Stench. High noon. They don't come around here much anymore. It's like they've learned they can't get in. I don't get it. But if they ever changed, I couldn't make these movies anymore, so it's good for me. <laughs> he asked you why. I know what he asked me. They found out I was helping out Mulligan and his people. I'm tired of eating bones while they're having a steak. I always thought I would only make horror films with my dad. And uh, I'm not a huge horror fan, even though I watched a lot of horror movies, but I love George's movies and, and my father's. And, and so when George asked me to be in this movie, I was kind of worried that my dad would be jealous in a way. And uh, he really wasn't, because it's funny like how sometimes directors are allies, even, you know, they don't necessarily, even if they make same movies, you know, in the same genre, they're really good friends. How long does he have? Had a little brother a bit. Took less than an hour before he turned. And then what happened? I shot him. I had seen Dawn of the Dead many years ago after a few too many bong hits, but <laughs> back in my early 20s. But uh, so I, I was, <laughs> I, I, you know, when I sat down and watched them, I, you know, it was interesting because you're thinking about the timing in which they came out and the social sort of um, comments and uh, just so much more than what is on the screen as far as just the zombie action. And I thought that right now is a time, I mean, I, I am a little, I am into the politics of what's going on in the world. Uh, um, I, I'm worried about it. I, 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 I watch every single documentary that is made and obsess on it. My wife and I sort of really obsess on it. So I thought, you know, this is this is kind of a an interesting way to do something related to that that isn't necessarily completely on the nose. Some of the gang who brought you Land of the Dead and Ezio Argento's father, of course, is Dario Argento, a director of Italian horror films. Land of the Dead opens nationally next week.